Greetings and welcome to Trahad Studio. I am Mark, and in this, our second devlog, I'll show you how we added to our empty scene environmental shaders, 3D structures, furniture, and vegetation, among other things. All of this coming up next. How many rocks have I modeled for our games? Honestly, I have no idea. For some reason, I find it impossible to create a set that leaves us completely satisfied. They are always either too angular or too rounded, sometimes with too many polygons or sometimes with too few. These in particular are not great, but I think they will do for the moment. The reason why I wanted to start with the rocks is that in addition to working as decoration, they are also very useful to delimit areas, introduce verticality in large open spaces, and they also cover the holes where I cannot find what to do with. That and also, the white blobs of ProBuilder look quite ugly on our scene. We still need to create a texture, right now I'm using one that I stole from somewhere, but at least it's working somehow. This way I can define the designated areas for our introductory tutorial style tasks, and I can also contemplate the elements of the scenario that will be interesting to integrate to the main events of the game, as well as start experimenting with ideas that could be useful in terms of exploration. All this inspired and helped me a lot right now that I'm also, in parallel to this process, writing the story and the main plot. Although I quite enjoy sketching maps and drafting the scenarios, the notions I had contemplated for the use of certain spaces change a lot the moment I start walking through the scenarios in 3D. And at least for the moment, beyond bringing our stage closer to its final state, what I seek is to fit the creative process and keep it dynamic. As for the vegetation resources, fortunately we have advanced a lot in the creation of textures and models. <clears throat> Actually, if you wish, you can check the packages we have uploaded to the Unity store. I'm pretty sure I'm just saying they're quite cool and you could find them useful. Link in the description. We are still missing some, in fact if you follow me on Twitter, you will know that I've been working on our tree package for months, and finally I'm almost satisfied with them. But we still lack several foliage textures, grass textures, gravel, sand and more. However, Ellie is already working on that, so while it's certainly looking pretty good, if I say so myself, in a few weeks it's going to look a lot better. In the meantime, we have shrubs, plants, vines, and flowers with different colors and designs. These are some of the trees we have created so far, all with configurable shader with vertex movement, and it took me a long time to make sure all the models move correctly with wave paint and with the terrain painting tools in Unity. Something new that we added was this shader for our rocks near the river, which allows us to configure the orientation and saturation of the moss that grows on it. Right now it only uses the generic texture that we have for our grass, but making a moss texture is already in our to-do list. Also new, we created a shader for our rivers, lakes and waterfalls, which with a UV-based displacement allows us to direct the movement of its current and foam, and since it doesn't use any textures, we can configure all its aspects if necessary. We also added a small bridge to be able to cross the river, but large enough in case we want to cross with a small cart. Another model we added was a small barn, which was another of the wave cubes in our scene that I wanted to remove as soon as possible. Fortunately being the model quite simple, and using the same base textures as our house, we were able to finish it quickly during one of our streams. With this we completed almost entirely the structures of the first scene, only the chicken coop will be missing, and the signs of the roads. At least of what we've considered so far but all this should be resolved before the next deadlock. Now for the farm animals and characters, that will take us a little longer. The rest of the week, we used to introduce the fixed cameras to our interior scenes using the Cinemachine ClearShot tool. Since it was very cumbersome to leave the camera in third person in these closed spaces. And it also allows us to control a little of the narrative of these scenes through framing, which also helps us visualize 
that development of events that we have planned. Our fixed cameras already work correctly, for the most part, although from time to time they still jump for no apparent reason from one to another, even when the character is not in the scene or even without being inside the frame. But well, that's just you need to do in whatever he likes. So I will continue reading the documentation on this for the next few days. Finally, during downtime, where I find no inspiration or I find myself too tired to write or move vertices, I dedicate my time to furnishing and decoration. Being the interior scene so wide, a lot of decoration is required so that it doesn't feel empty. And also, during this process we realize what other models we need to consider to complete the scenes. As for now, rocks, fabrics and embroidery will be a good way to bring some color and contrast to the house. We also plan to introduce more variety of colors to our existing textures once our spaces get better defined. And last, but this will be much more in the future, we also plan to introduce design elements according to the background and personalities of our characters. But this will be once I finish writing the story and the main plot. And well, this will be the report of this week. Thank you very much for being interested in our project. For my part, this will be all. Only reminds to wish you, as always, a lot of success in your projects and until next time.